What's up, everyone? Welcome to a special edition of the Agents of Fandom podcast. I got a interview exclusive with quite literally the nicest person in the show business industry I have ever met in my entire life. This isn't hyperbole. This is straight up what it is. Anjali Bamani of Overwatch, Apex, uh, Ms. Marvel, so many different things. Anj, how are you doing? I'm so good. And if I'm the nicest person you've met, we have to introduce you to more of my friends because uh, I am consistently, uh, constantly in awe of the generosity and the kindness of every single person who I am lucky enough to call a friend in this industry. Um, last night we were at the Picard premiere. We were all looking at each other being like, well, how are we here? And how is it that the, all the people that I love who are the nicest in the world who are, are here, you know? Patrick Stewart and Jonathan Frakes are two of the most lovely, generous human beings you could, you, they were exactly what you want them to be, you know? So um, that's all, that's all me basically deflecting a compliment. Isn't that good? <laughs> I will say <laughs> the top three are also your friends. Like I got to add Ross Marquand in there. I got to add yes. Carolina Ravasa in there. Like Clearly. those are just all the kindest people I've ever met. And they are also your close friends. So that does make a lot of sense. We got to meet for the first time at the uh, Edmonton Expo. That's right. Now, I'm going to be in LA. I land in LAX on Monday. When are you picking me up at the airport? Uh, what time are you getting in? <laughs> I think it's about, uh, I think it's around 1130. Garrett is Wait actually going to be coming to pick on. me up. Let me take but, a look uh, here. Ah, okay. I can't pick you up at 11, but if you want to like hang out at the airport for like, 40 minutes, I might be able to swing by and scoop you. Well, uh, Garrett Garrett is actually going to come get me, but we're going to spend the day in LA. And so maybe some kind of lunch. After oh, I that, will be that seeing be, you. That, that is that. We will, do, we will text and we will make that happen. We won't bore people with our scheduling. But um, but yes, text me. You can make that happen. No problem. I had, to, and, I had to send the invite live on recording so that I could. I the people knew to that it. it was happening. Yeah. yeah. We could Both be, for clout we could and be for like, to hold you to be able to hold you to it. I was going to say um, the accountability is more important. <laughs> exactly, but uh, let's get to this. The end of 2022 and the start of 2023 has been huge for you. All of a sudden, you hop onto the scene in a major way in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as the lovely Auntie Ruby. Um, you've had some major anniversaries with the anniversary of your YouTube channel, I Am Fun Size, yep. the anniversary of Apex Legends. Overwatch yeah. 2 has come out. Uh, your book, I Am Fun Size and So Are You, has come out. Talk to me about this whirlwind of the last year because you got one of the busiest schedules I've ever seen. You know what's funny is that, um, and it's slightly embarrassing, but but hopefully people won't judge me too much when I say this. I forget that major things have happened because I move on to the next thing so quickly that that uh, like the whirlwind has just been yes go 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 in all of the best ways like just keep moving keep moving keep moving, but I I take. You know, I enjoy the moment, I relish the moment, and then I'm on to the next one. So sometimes it takes me a second to go, oh, yeah, I forgot that all that happened in that. Like what you just said, I was like, oh, that's right. That all just kind of happened in like the last year. Huh, look at that. Um, and I think I'd like to think that, I mean, I, I, it's not that I'm not like taking the wins, so to speak. But I'd like to think that that's a good way for me to be moving through this life because I don't want to, I want to take the win because that's important for, for everything, but I also want to keep creating and keep serving and keep doing things that are helping people and connecting with people and all of that. And so I just, I just seem to have this very short, short term memory situation. I mean, I, it's, it's, it's. It can be slightly embarrassing because sometimes I'll be like having a conversation like or doing an interview and I will completely forget something major. But um, I, for me, it's just it's also just a joy to know that. I really do think a career in the arts and, and I can at least I can at least speak for a career in acting is it's a it's a game of endurance. It's not you have a big break. It's not, you have to get to this point and then it's easy, you know, it's, it's, it's easy riding from then on out. It is really about just showing up 
every single day with the same amount, if you can, like with showing up as your best every single day, even though your best will vary depending on from day to day, but showing up that way. Um, and that's what the whirlwind has really been because it's just been cool, cool, cool. I get to show up and then I get to do this. Wow. And then I get to do this. Wow. And then I get to talk to TJ. Awesome. And then I get to go do this. Like it's, um, it's just, it's, 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 I, I feel so ineloquent because when you ask me that question, I'm like, oh, yeah, it really is a thing that I haven't sat to think about. Um, I'm too busy getting excited about the other things that we're making right now for you guys. Are there any things on the horizon that you are allowed to talk about that uh, you're in the midst of making? I mean, I'm not going to even, one, because you're my friend, and two, because I know better, I'm not going to try and be like, so when's Ms. Marvel season two? Are you yeah, in it? All, when you are know you appearing me, in the like, Marvels? But yeah, It's no news to you. Like, you know that I am evolved when it comes to that. You know the story that I didn't even tell my husband that I was filming Ms. Marvel when we were filming Ms. Marvel. I did not tell him until it was public knowledge that I was in it. So it's he true. knew I was I've doing tried. something. I've tried behind yeah. the scenes yeah. to get something. Yeah. It never works. This is also where that, like, where that forgetting helps. <laughs> <laughs> because when I forget that I've recorded something and then it comes out, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. I'm glad I forgot it because I might have had a hard time keeping the secret. Um, what I can tell you about is this very cool, at least I think it's very cool, um, uh, venture um, uh, creative project that I have been uh, putting together specifically for people who are pursuing lives and careers in the arts, performing arts, um, uh, behind the camera, in front of the camera. And uh, it is, I call it the hungry artist. And it is specifically to help us dispel all of the myths of the starving artist that keep us as artists really unfulfilled and struggling with things that we don't need to be struggling with because of so many things that we were told along the way or so many just pieces of information we thought were true, they're absolutely not true um, about being an artist and living an artistic life and um, replacing those myths of the starving artist with the truths of the hungry artist. Because the one thing is you do have to stay a little hungry um, in order to keep creating. You still have to have that fire in you in order to not just like sit back and, and just be comfortable all the time. Because unfortunately I love comfort but comfort 100% of the time is kind of the death of creativity. You always have to be slightly off balance in a really exciting way. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been putting this together. I've been putting together some seminars. There are going to be some free online seminars. There are going to be some speeches I'm doing. And then uh, putting together a podcast uh, that is probably not going to be of that same name because someone else has that name. But there's a whole set of things that I'm putting together. Um, and then, of course, some some at some point along the way, we'll do the book. That's so wonderful. I think one of the reasons why we get along so well is something, the reason I love Spider-Man so much as my dogs are barking in the background. There's the nothing wrong with I dogs love... barking in the background. They're the greatest creatures on the planet. Never be mad about a dog. I know you, I know you have uh, such a mental Greatest dog, dog of all time. Well, so yes, I, think, yeah. I do have the greatest dog of all time. Sorry to all the other dogs. So I didn't think you'd mind too much, but uh, I feel like we both live by a similar thought process of that Spidey and Uncle Ben have taught us with great power comes great responsibility. When you have a gift you can provide to the world, it's important to to provide it. And something that I love so much about your work is it's not this is the right way. You should be doing this too. It's, yeah. hey, these are my life experiences. Yeah. I've done some great things. I've made some mistakes. These are how I've learned from it. Hopefully you can get something out of it too. And I know that's been the case for I Am Fun Size and so are you. Um, I love the book so much. I have such a terrible attention span that I can't really sit down and read something for hours at a time, but it's my Oh, then favorite. it's perfect for you because it's got these exactly. little little essays and stuff and you can pick it up and read it in any order and there are fun pictures to keep you entertained it's uh it's a perfect book for me because it's when i'm when i'm feeling anxious when i'm feeling low when i'm just need something to do before bed it's the perfect thing to kind of pick up uh to take my mind off of life and to readjust my frame of thinking so talk to us before i pass things off to our wonderful Fandom Academy crew to talk about The Last of Us with you. Talk to me about uh, your new book. 
Uh, well, as you mentioned, it's called I Am Fun Size and So Are You, Thoughts from a Tiny Human on Living a Giant Life. Um, and it came out of the web series that I created in 2017, which is also the same name. Uh, it was a, it started as a love letter to the gaming community because I had just really started to connect with the online community through Overwatch and then through other projects and everything. And no matter what, no matter how you find your way in to the gaming community, you find that it is much bigger than any one project, much bigger than any one game. There are so many people who are giving and artistic and supportive and excited to be excited for you. And that is infectious. And I really wanted to give something back that, that suited that energy. And so knowing that I don't really have anything that is unique to me other than my set of experiences and how I've dealt with them and like who I am, I can't tell anybody else how to do, like you said, I can't tell anybody else how to do your life. But what I can share with you is similar experiences I might have had and how they helped me, tools that I learned along the way that may or may not be your jam. And if they are, great, take them and run with them, put them in your toolbox. And if not, then move on because the, that's part of the journey of life is figuring out what to take in and what not to, what works for you. Right. So I wrote the book uh, in 2021, um, published it through my company in 2022. And I'm thrilled to say I, uh, the response has been uh, I, I, I've just been I've been overwhelmed by the lovely response to it, by people's uh, emotional responses to it. The messages that I'm getting, the fact that they made it a bestseller in like the first week, which blew my mind. Um, it's just, it's just a really fun ride. And I always want people to know my, I feel like my number one mission right now in my life is to let people know they're not alone. That anytime you think you're alone, um, in, in a bad way, not, you know, like anytime you think that you are the only person who could possibly understand what you're going through, or you are having to go at this whole journey alone, I promise you there is someone out there to stand next to you, to support you, to crack a joke, to do something that will make that burden a little bit lighter. And when you are surrounded by people like that, and when you know you have people like that, that's when that great power comes in. And all of us have that great power. When you say great power, with great power comes great responsibility. We all have it. It's just remembering that we do and learning that we do and trusting that we do. And not all of us have experiences that have taught us that. So anything bad that I've got or anything difficult that I've gone through in my life uh, has helped me get to where I am today. I don't necessarily want to re-experience those things, but it's helped me get here, which means I now can help people with my compassion and with the experiences I've had by sharing those. So that's what the book's about. And hopefully it feels like it's your buddy in a book is what I like to call it. You throw it in your backpack and you got a friend with you. You know, you take it around, you pick it up and you pick it up before you go to bed and you're having a conversation with a friend before you hit set. Um, it's, it's just something, just something to help people along the way. It's, it's as simple as that. Make sure you check out it's I am fun size. And so are you anywhere you get books online yes. bookstores, and, all those places. And I will highly recommend uh, checking out my store on streamily.com. Uh, streamly.com slash Anjali Bamani, because the books that you buy there, whether they're signed copies or unsigned copies, a portion of those proceeds go to the Underdog Community Project here in Los Angeles, which is uh, an organization that offers free health care or veterinary care to the um, animals of unhoused folks here in the city of Los Angeles. So um, I'm always encouraging people to, to put it there so we can send more money for the little furry ones. Absolutely. Definitely make sure you check that out. Also, please, you'll be able to check out this interview uh, wherever you get your podcasts on the Agents Fan and Podcast as well on our YouTube page. Um, and, subscribe. Before, and subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, like, subscribe. subscribe, hit the notification bell, rate do five all the stars, things, write do the all review. the things that, that make you get more episodes because I, I, I say this from personal experience and I don't say this to everyone. TJ is a very special person and what you guys are creating is so special. So it is very worth all of you subscribing just to have even in little snippets or in large ones to have this, this light in your life. It's definitely. Worth it. This is why I say you're the kindest person in show business. Because I, mean, I didn't make business. the news. I'm just reporting it. I didn't like, I have this just, uh, that's all. Before I make the transfer, the last question I want to ask for you is, I guess, kind of a multiple part question, but how was the damn Quantumania premiere? Is Jonathan Majors 
that sexy in real life? It, um, is Paul Rudd really look that young? Was the movie good? Tell me everything other than yeah, actually what it, happened in the it, movie. It, it was absolutely wonderful. It is, it, it, it's like an explosion of imagination, this movie. And everyone in it is just fantastic. Jonathan Majors, Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly. I mean, just, just, just like everyone is delicious. Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer. Like, I don't know how they still look. They, they like, this is still the most beautiful couple in the history of ever on screen. And you're like, these, everybody is just, everybody's wonderful in it and so gracious. I've, I've had the, the good fortune of meeting Evangeline at some conventions and she is warm and kind. And like I said, I, I feel like the, the most talented people I've ever met also happen to be the most gracious and the most uh, considerate and compassionate and kind. And, and she is, she, you definitely get that from her when you meet her. Um, and yes, Paul Rudd does look that, I don't think he's ever going to age. I think Paul Rudd is always going to look that way. He's always going to look that sweet and kind. Um, yeah, it's super fun. I, I, everybody's got to go see it. It's super, super fun. It's, it's, um, it is just an, ex like I said, an explosion of the imagination. It's really very cool. It makes me want to go to the quantum realm, even though it's not really supposed to be such a welcome place, but it's just like the visuals are stunning. Absolutely stunning.